Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. My name is Haley and I have mitochondrial DNA disease and fibrogelin and other conditions associated with it. And today I have my mom joining me again. Hi! This is your what? Third video? I think so. I'm famous now. You are famous. Or infamous. That's all my subscribers subscribe just to see you. I know. It's all about me. <laughs> Today we are going to share 20 things that you have to deal with if you have mitochondrial disease. I mean not every patient deals with these, just in my case. And today as we're filming it, it is March 25th, and if you didn't know, on March 25th, 2016, I uploaded my very first video, which Happy I- Happy Anniversary! <laughs> Thank you! Um, which I- I haven't been able to watch the whole thing, because it crunched you hard. Anyways. And so I will try my hardest to get this video uploaded today or tomorrow. And I, no, I need to finish editing all the Make-A-Wish vlogs. I have no excuse of why they're not up. She really doesn't. Anyways, let's get into the video. <clears throat> the first thing is, your hair can pull out in chunks. And when I mean chunks, I literally mean chunks. Explain why. Well, what her doctor has told us is that when she ha is going through her one of her episodes or she has an increased energy need, that her cells to things that are less energy need, like her hair, stop working and shut down. So from that point on, it breaks off and falls out. So sometimes that's in a lot of strands and sometimes that's in great big chunks. And I've dealt with that for the past few weeks because I've been in a flare-up. I'm doing much better now, but we're still trying to figure out why the heck I had a flare-up. But yes, and so I'm still dealing with my hair falling out. And it's just something you have to learn to live with at times. Second thing, or another thing, is you have to have a basket for medication. She has so many medications. It started out with just two that were easily concealed in our medicine cabinet and now it's a basket full of medicines because taking them in and out of the cabinet would be just a nightmare because she takes them so many times a day. Yes, I will insert a picture of the basket of meds somewhere. Right clip. around here. The next thing is, is typically the pharmacy that you go to get meds through, you're on first name basis with them. They know you, they ask how you're doing. All Mito people are different. So just like with autism, when you see a person with autism, it's a person with autism. Mitochondrial disease is exactly the same thing. Haley and I both share the exact same type of mitochondrial disease, yet hers manifests much more severe than mine does. Yep. So what might what may work for somebody <clears throat> else who has Mito doesn't mean it's going to work for me, and vice versa. The next thing is at least in my case, I have every single medication I take and doses and doses engraved in my brain practically. I can recite them all from memory, even though I can't remember what I just was doing five minutes ago, but you just have to learn why you're taking all these meds and what they are because there have been numerous times where I've been a patient in the hospital and they forgot to, to bring meds. so. You gotta be on top of it. You have to drive everywhere for doctors. I don't care where you live, even if you live right down the street from a great hospital, you're gonna have to drive when you have a child with a lot of medical needs. We we are very fortunate to live in a state where we only have to drive. Some people have to fly here to see these doctors. Yeah. We're very fortunate that my long, our longest drive is two and a half hours in one direction, and I only have to do that every six weeks or so, so it's not really that bad. Um, <clears throat> that's five hours of driving time a day, but you yeah. know, in the, long, in the grand scheme of things, we don't have to fly there, and they are within a reasonable distance. But it is true that there is no it would be very convenient and hopefully someday they can open up a hospital for mitochondrial and metabolic patients where all these doctors can be in one centralized location that would be amazing but until that happens we drive everywhere or until they get clones to be on every street corner that's true the next thing is or you get to sleep in really late like i've been waking up at 11 for the what past couple of weeks past couple of weeks 
And that's not always fun. Sure, it's nice every now and then to sleep in super late, but at times it kind of gets frustrating that you need all the sleep when it feels like when you wake up you're just as tired as when you went to bed. <laughs> you know how to change IV bags. <laughs> Amongst other things around here, I have learned to change IV bags, flush her lines, mix medications, um, I could draw blood out of her lumens if I have to, I have learned to administer certain IV medications, change my dressing, change her dressing, which will not be, we want to deal with all that stuff for very much longer because I'm getting a port in two Yay. weeks. Um, take blood pressure, temperature blood sugar um, so yeah another thing is you have five bajillion other conditions associated with mito I don't think there is one mito patient that has no other condition whether it be neurological physical go I have like 10 separate conditions other than mito <coughs> those are all secondary and mito causes it because of the uh, my cells around my body don't have as much energy as they need to have to function properly so things in my body go haywire and that's why so many other conditions are triggered or caused is by the loss of energy so your body just doesn't work correctly. And dysomnomia, hot switches, dispersal, post-trial over complex regional pain syndrome, cyclic vomiting syndrome, you don't teach my brain, you don't teach my brain, infertility, gastroparesis, IBS, chronic fatigue syndrome, anxiety, anxiety, depression, and <laughs> ADD. So yeah. A lot of diagnoses. You get really, really sick from being sick. Mm -hmm. So if she gets a cold, even a slight cold, she, that's what started this whole downfall last year was she had a cold. Um, <clears throat> for her, it can be deadly. It can actually kill her. Mm -hmm. So if you are sick or your children are sick, keep them home. Mm -hmm. And we are very, I'm, I'm very, very proactive and assertive about letting people know if they're even coughing or sneezing around any of my kids that they cannot be around them mm -hmm. and I will actually get up and leave a place because her life is more important than your feelings. Sorry. Um, next thing is you get to lay in bed all day. For the past week or so it hasn't not really been that since I've been feeling better from my therapy but there are a lot of times where I'm just in bed all day and able to sit up for long periods of time my body's just tired and very weak at times, so, and sure it's nice, it might sound nice to people who don't have mito or a chronic illness to lay in bed all day. It's not fun because you don't necessarily always feel very productive and it's very hard to stay happy. You get a wheelchair! I only use my wheelchair outside of the house, luckily I'm able to walk around their house fine or if they're short distances, like I'm visiting a friend's house. But when it's like stores and places like that, I do have to have a wheelchair because my legs, my body's just not strong enough yet. The next thing is when you push yourself, everything breaks loose. There, now very rarely, but this does happen, that there's a time where I push myself and I don't have a ton of, what's the word? Reserves. Reserves, yes. But most of the time when I push myself, everything breaks loose. My just way more sensitive with every symptom I'm just gonna leave it at that she gets to be a hot mess yeah basically it wreaks havoc on you emotionally I think this is true for the whole family yep is that it's really hard when we see her struggling so much to just get through daily life and um, we have some really fun times as a family where we laugh and we hold on to those times and then we have some very hard times as so we're going to run through these last couple of ones really quickly. You know your doctors really well and have their cell phone numbers. You have a legit excuse for watching Netflix. Food allergies are very, very common with mito patients. Tired is not even mito tired. Like, unless you have mito, you have no idea what type of tired you are dealing with. It's kind of like running the marathon while having the flu and having 60 pounds of weight drug on you every day. Probably. You get overheated and have temperature dysregulation, which dysautonomia causes that, and which means your temperature gauge is broken. Is broken. Yeah, we went to see Beauty and the Beast on my birthday. I almost passed out because 
I got overheated and couldn't cool down. It was really hot in there though. It was. And that's pretty much it. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of other things, but those are the things we could think of that we wanted to share with you, and we hope that you learned something from this and can yeah. pass it on. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and 